So now in this video we're going to introduce the inductor into this video series. Now the inductor uh, by itself is uh, not impressive at all. What it does in circuits is much more impressive. So I'm just going to go right there. Whereas I did kind of basic uh, circuits for the uh, rest of them. But in uh, any case, inductors have the electrical property of not liking rapid current uh, changes. So at first when you apply power, it takes a little bit for the current to get flowing and then it gets to steady state there's some internal resistance in the inductor but otherwise current flows uh, freely once it starts flowing and then when you cut the power then current does not stop instantly it keeps pushing current so a problem is like if you have a transistor you turn it off suddenly if you don't have a release for the current to go to currents just going to keep flowing through the transistor and if it's uh, bad enough it'll fry the transistor mechanical switches too will get a spark and uh, will damage them over time so usually you have a diode in parallel with it but uh, since we're going to capture that kickback we have it in series with it so that it can keep flowing and uh, charge up the capacitor even though the capacitor will be at the supply voltage it'll just keep pumping current in the capacitor voltage will go up so that's how it boosts the uh, voltage normally when you see inductors this uh, diode the cathode here leads back to the positive supply that way it does not conduct the uh, diode does not conduct while currents flowing through the uh, inductor but when you cut the uh, path for it to flow then it can go through the diode and uh, go back into the inductor until the inductor runs out of energy so now to get it to start conducting because the capacitor is going to get to about 0.6 volts less than the supply voltage really quickly to uh, get the inductor uh, conducting after that we have to close the uh, switch here that will turn the transistor on we could just use a mechanical switch there too but uh, I want to keep showing components we used so far in this series so we're going to have the transistor also we could use a digital input like a 555 timer or something to turn the transistor on and off instead of me pressing the button but we could use a mechanical switch if we wanted to and we could use less resistance here I'm not sure exactly how low we can go but that would be more current and each inductive kickback would be uh, more impactful but in any case turn the transistor on we got current flow it takes a brief period of time but much faster than you notice to get start conducting you release it then it stops current at this point but current keeps flowing into the capacitor so it charges up now the capacitor as long as you keep uh, going and the lower the value the capacitor to well the voltage will rise rapidly and really nothing will stop it other than leakage and stuff the oscilloscope has a relatively low resistance like a million ohms so that will pull the voltage down but in any case for the most part the capacitor voltage rises uncontrollably as you keep giving it pulses and so the zener diode here we're going to use a 5.6 volt zener diode that will keep the capacitor from charging above 5.6 and as current goes down it blocks a little less voltage and uh, so it might even trickle down to a 5 if we just left the uh, capacitor alone but in uh, any case it will prevent it going above 5.6 and we'll see somewhere around 5.6 on the oscilloscope just as proof and that's uh, where it will level off but in uh, any case Hopefully that all made sense now, so we will look at it on the breadboard. So now we're a little crowded here. This is the breadboard. I'll remove the capacitor for right now. You can see we have the inductor, so it's a 10 milli Henry inductor, fairly large value. And uh, also another thing, if you're buying inductors, sometimes they use MH milli Henry for uh, micro Henry, but micro is not MH. It's actually uh, U. A mu Greek letter mu but sometimes they just use U H and so if they look especially cheap good chance that's actually uh, micro Henry instead of milli Henry but this is a 10 milli Henry so in any case that comes to the anode of the uh, diode there we'll have the capacitor down there that's so current can go through the diode but not back out as the voltage rises above the supply voltage and then we'll have the Zener diode there cathode 5.6 volt Zener diode cathode there and an anode to the negative side of the supply and that's going to actually conduct at a slightly lower voltage as a burst of currents go down. But in any case, we'll put the capacitor back 10 
micro farad capacitor and there's the negative side it's polarized so that has to go to the uh, negative side I think you can see gray there but in any case that's the uh, gray side also it's a shorter uh, lead right there so the uh, 100 ohm resistor goes all the way up to where the anode of the diode is and that side of the inductor and that comes to the transistor so again we're a little crowded here I'm gonna move the transistor so the top of the switch is always connected to each other and looks like the board's trying to push it out but in any case top two pins are always connected that goes to a blank row up there when I close the switch that will connect the top two pins to the bottom two pins so I have the base the middle pin of the transistor this is a 2N 3904 we're looking at the flat side so there is the emitter that's the arrow part of it on the schematic a base in the middle and collector to the right so I turn it this way the uh, middle of the switch is not connected to anything so that's where I have the uh, resistor there so I'll put the collector there and uh, so collector and resistor are connected just to each other the base is to the bottom of the switch and uh, it'll have the 10 kilo ohm resistor giving the base a small amount of current because we just need a small amount of current to get it conducting fully and the emitter is to ground uh, basic uh, NPN bipolar junction transistors for all of the transistors I have that start with 2N and so now we have the oscilloscope here I just turned it on and the uh, alligator clips they come from the other end of that cable there I clipped them to jumpers right there so I can move them to the board as I want I can go to uh, that uh, row there or that row to they're directly connected there to get our zero volt reference point as far as the red probe is concerned that's also the uh, negative side of the capacitor there so if I move the uh, red jumper to where the uh, diode is right there and uh, the capacitor there you can see that we have the uh, voltage so it looks like it was a little bit higher this is about a million ohms of resistance through this oscilloscope and so it helped the capacitor discharge a little bit you'll see that uh, we're getting about a diode drop below 3 volts so you can see there we got up to 5 volts really easily right there and uh, so in any case there you can see above 3 volts and to prove that that's the supply voltage there you can see right there 3 volts now you can see I also have 100 milliamps of current right there I'm gonna keep hitting the button I think that'll be fine and you can see the the current going and uh, normally I keep it uh, 20 milliamps but uh, you're gonna see here that I better go there if I go down to a uh, 20 and now I start hitting the button it keeps saying CC that's because we have uh, brief periods of time where it needs more than 20 milliamps of current but the supply limits it so we don't want that with this particular circuit so we're gonna have to increase the uh, current but again it still worked and uh, you wouldn't even notice it if you uh, didn't see those CC's probably but uh, in any case that is what that is telling you and that's why I raised the current really for a good working circuit you don't want to uh, limit the current so that means constant current it stopped providing the full voltage so that it could limit current to uh, 20 uh, milliamps at those uh, times but in any case there you can see we have three volts minus about a diode drop as it charges through there but now when we get the capacitor uh, to start flowing current and then try to make it stop suddenly it boosts the uh, current into the capacitor and raises the voltage as you put more current into a capacitor its voltage rises and ultimately it probably stopped at 5 volts because there was little enough current involved to get the uh, Zener diode to not really build up the full 5.6 volts probably about uh, 5 volts so in any case we could improve on this by far but I like this as a demonstration circuit so hope you enjoyed make sure you check out one of the other videos that I'm posting click like subscribe the bell all that donate to patreon if you can I have links down in the description that helps out the most but just watching as many videos as you can is uh, the best help and doesn't cost you anything. So thanks for that. I will see you in the next video.